Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you today? Oh, we're very quiet at work. I don't know if you are. It's funny, isn't it? June is our busiest month. October turns out to be one of the quietest. I had a chat with the bank manager yesterday. He does a bought the practice on November the 11th, 2015, and so it's coming up for two years. And they like to have a chat with me every year. It's uh, on the face of it, it's just a review of the overdraft facility. It's sort of an, well, you know, financial terms they call an impairment review, which means they just want to know if anything's changed. You know, if anything's got better, anything's got worse. Only they want to know if anything's got worse. <sighs> he's uh, he's all right, my bank manager. He's a nice enough bloke, but he's he's not Mr. Dynamic, you know. Last year he didn't send through an agenda. This year he sent through a rather sort of nebulous agenda, which included things like, uh, oh God, representational governance or something, all these single word bullet points on the agenda. And then he said, you know, did you get the agenda? And I said, yeah. And then he started reading it and I said to him, look, I've got it right in front of me. You know, let's, let's get on. We booked an hour for this phone call and it's all on my mobile. So I'm just wondering, whether the battery's going to last, I mean, cost, cost isn't an, an issue, but you know, I don't, I very rarely talk about mobile for five minutes, let alone an hour. And uh, and then uh, he, he couldn't even fit it all in an hour, so he's got no, you know, no, no eye on the clock and no sense of what's, you know, prioritization, what's important. He's just been, you know, and he was sort of right at the beginning, he said, Are there are any items you'd like to put on the agenda? And I thought, Oh, god, he's. Here's a guy who's been on Agenda 101 management. <laughs> so anyway, we had a nice little chat about the uh, the business and everything, and then you know, and then they always try and sell you the same old stuff. You know, when is your business liability insurance due? Uh, you know, will you just give us a chance to quote for it? And that's all I'm asking for, just a chance to quote for it. And I'm like, fine, I gave you a chance to grow for it last year. You were hopelessly over the top in terms of cost. You're not cost effective. Lloyds Bank is not cost effective on anything. Uh, they, uh, you know, and he says to me, like, do you think uh, a business credit card would be useful? And so I said to him, yeah, I probably would, you know, because, well, I think, I mean, I've had one in the past and I know that it is, you know, so that wasn't a difficult question. Uh, um, because uh, sometimes when you're buying like one-off things and you don't, you know, you've got no previous relationship with the supplier, uh, they have to take a massive punt on you to send out anything and invoice it. And uh, it's better just to buy it with a credit card. Just say, look, I'll just pay for it with a credit card. And then you still get your 30 days credit as if you'd been invoiced and yet you get the goods straight away and they're happy. Although obviously they pay 3% for the privilege or whatever. But um, yeah, so what else are they trying to sell? I mean, and then, and then having said to me, you know, um, you know, would you like a business credit card? They then then say, oh, okay. Then well, in that case, I'll um, I shall make a note that you applied for one, uh, but I can go through it now. So can I just have your date of birth? <laughs> can I just have your address again? How many years have you lived at that address? I'm like Jesus Christ, you know. I mean don't offer people <laughs> don't don't offer people stuff and just not do the basic groundwork they know how many times has my bank asked me where I live and how many years I've been at that address so I said to him well I don't know it's more than 10 years silence <laughs> so I'm like you know I, I mean I can look the I can look the date up if you want to oh yes uh, it would be better to be as accurate as possible okay yeah all right then 3rd of February 2002 I don't make you happy <laughs> what a plodder, a plodder, you know, what a plodder, what, what plodders we have to deal with. I mean, you know, a nice guy, but then, you know, but more concerned to then explain to me about this new system they've got coming in with where you can pay a check in, where you take a photograph of it and the bank will accept the, your digital photograph or they won't, they're, they're robots that triage all this stuff. You know, instead of having staff to check and signatures, it'll all be done 
digitally and they don't have to stamp an initial every single check that comes through it'll all be done by computer algorithm so it helps them out but apparently there's some drawback that they need to explain to me which I couldn't quite fathom what the problem was and we don't take checks anyway so why the hell you know <sighs> and so I'm talking to him through my lunch hour and then by the time we finished he he's overrun by five minutes and my patient's banging on the door and I've had no lunch and if there's anything that's more calculated to make me angry than missing my lunch then I've yet to find out what it is Yeah, oh, and vehicle finance, and oh, I hear, you know, you're going to buy something, or buy you're going to buy a new X-ray machine. Um, you know, perhaps we could help. We have an equipment financing arm. Um, could you just give us the chance to quote on that? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's not. I tell you, there's not much love lost between me and my bank. I don't. My bank was. I, I arrived at my bank Lloyd's because they were the only people that would consider lending me the money. And they only considered lending it to me at sort of 3% over base, which I consider to be quite an extortionate rate. Uh, I've never, I mean, you know, I'm used to borrowing at half percent above base. And then, then they put me through all sorts of uh, hoops to prove that I could still pay at 15%. Then every time they ring me up, they ask me if I want to go on a fixed rate rather than a variable. And I say, no, you know, I, they say, you know, it depends on what you think about interest rates. It, it might go up or down in the future. And I said, actually, it just depends on my attitude to fixed or variable rates. And basically, I'm a big fan of variable rates because even if the rates go up, I'm in a profession where I can put my fees up and so I can I can adapt. I'm not like a young married couple with a massive mortgage that has uh, on a fixed uh, salary where they, they are sort of thinking well providing the mortgage stays exactly where it is we'll be all right you know then they're budgeting everything down to the last pound i mean if interest rates go up to uh i don't know three percent five percent whatever then you know it puts an extra couple of hundred quid on the mortgage which is you know unfortunate but uh now i'm thinking about buying a 3d uh cone beam Scanner, which is going to put a thousand pounds a month on the surgery bills. So, you know, so what? That, what do you do? You know. But he's he's uh, you know he's he's used to dealing with people who are used to dealing with small amounts, which is odd because I mean he works in healthcare, so I don't see that all his clients can be all that worried about the odd fiver here or there. But uh, you know, talking of uh, my daughter rang me up yesterday and she said her car's in the garage. This is another lesson in service sector, you know, which with dentists, as dentists, we are in the service sector. So we have to uh, look at other service sector industries and work out, see what we can get from them, mainly what we can get from them in way of improvements, but also see if we can avoid the pit holes that they fall into. And it's how, it's how weird how the uh, pit holes are so obvious when we are the customer and yet the service that we provide is is so difficult to understand and when we're the provider you know how we don't we spend hours worrying about how to get it right but if somebody else gets it wrong we know in a nanosecond that they've, <laughs> they've you know it's gone wrong so what did they do wrong what did they do wrong well she rang up and she said dad look can you ring up the garage for me because They've uh, asking me. They've sheared off my wheel nuts, and they are. They just ask me. They ring up to ask me whether I want the cheap ones or the expensive ones to replace them, whether I want the locking ones or the non-locking ones. And I'm like, first of all, I'm annoyed because I don't think garages should should put women in the position of having to ring their fathers to try and sort the problem out for them. I think they should be they should be more female friendly. Okay. But so already I'm pissed off, and then then I'm doubly pissed off because obviously I'm at work, and this is another conflicting demand on my time, which is I don't consider my daughter's request a demand on my time. I consider the garage's fuck up a demand on my time. So I'm already annoyed with the garage. Okay, so I ring up and I say, oh, I'm ringing up on behalf of blah blah blah. I just want to. She's mentioned something about uh, wheel nuts. Can you just explain to me what's going on? Oh yes, uh, uh, in uh, taking the wheels off, the technicians have uh, destroyed the locking wheel nuts. So we just want to know whether you'd like us to replace them with um, 
with ordinary wheel nuts or with more locking wheel nuts because there is obviously quite a big difference in the price. So, uh, so I'm like, oh, what, what's happened? And they've they've damaged the wheel nuts, taken the wheels off. She said, yes, that's right. Yeah, we just need, all I need to know from you is whether you want the more expensive ones or the cheaper ones. So I said, right, okay, just let's just wind this back a bit. I want to understand what's happened. I said, the the uh, what's the uh, how were they damaged? She said, um, I don't know. So I said, all right, well, I need to talk to the technician. And this is this is the first key in not, uh, no, I'm not Donald Trump, I'm not gonna tell you the art of the deal. But the first thing is, you have to talk to the organ grinder, okay? So, don't have a three-way conversation. Have a, it, it, all your conversations are gonna be two-way between you and the person who's either, either knows or uh, has got the authority to sort the problem out, preferably both. So, uh, I'm put on, uh, she takes the phone through to the workshop, so I'm putting on the phone some some guy. Oh, oh yes, hello, hello, yeah. Um, the uh, wheel nuts uh, were uh, broken. Uh, when, well, we tried to remove the wheels. This is to do the brake pads. And uh, the problem is that the brake pads are below uh, Ford's uh, specification for brake pads, so they do need to be replaced. And the job was authorised by Miss Blah Blah Blah, and I'm just trying to do the job that she authorised. However, because the wing nuts are broken, I am unable to uh, complete the job <clears throat> that she authorised. And uh, uh, when I tried to remove the wing nuts, I used the correct uh, torque spanner, and I set the torque to it to the Ford specified torque, and uh, and they fractured. But you know, so. I don't know what more I can do. I've just done everything according to the manual, and we just need to know what you know what you want to do. Just <laughs> they had to stop the job. They'd stop the job. They'd stop the job. I mean, they're the at that point the wheels are like the Grand Old Duke of York's men. They can't stay on and they can't come off. <laughs> so really, he could have gone ahead chiseled the nuts off knowing that that was the only way they were going to come off and uh, and replace the uh, brake pads and then and then uh, you know pending a decision on us on what wing on what nuts we wanted at that point I was thinking I probably had enough nuts without buying any new ones but um, but no they stopped at that point when they fucked up they stopped it at the point they fucked up and do you know why they stopped it at that point because they knew they'd fucked up they knew it they stopped, they, we fuck this, we've fucked up, we've got to have a word with the customer. So, so I said, well look, where, when uh, the technicians break stuff, what is the policy? You know, what do you do? Who pays when the technicians break stuff? And, <laughs> and they're like, well, the problem is that the nuts were um, uh, probably over tightened in the past, or they had got corroded, or they got stuck, or they were, you know, there's something wrong with the nut head or something. So I said, is this your locking nut that you've broken or, or is it the customers? And they said, no, no, it's the customers. So, <clears throat> the, the, lo the long and the short of it is, and this applies to dentistry, okay? That when something goes wrong in the midst of a job, what do you do? How do you treat it? We have, in the surgery, we have a policy whereby we like to make we reduce the intangibility associated with dentistry. We like to give people certainty. So what we do is we do a thorough examination of their mouth, we do x-rays free of charge because we don't want them complaining that we may have done unnecessary x-rays from a diagnostic point of view. All the diagnosis we do is free, then we give them a fully costed treatment plan, which I think is valid for three months. Now, if that treatment plan changes, then we stop and we tell them what's different and we get their consent before continuing right not just consent consent to continue consent to changing the treatment plan consent to changing costs and then only when they're happy then then we continue now is that what happened at the Ford garage I don't think it was I mean that something similar to that would be along the lines of uh, uh, they rang her and said that the brake pads need replacing and then uh, when they got the car jacked up they found that it needed a new exhaust as well and so what you do is you get someone to bring up, say, look, bring up the customer and say that in addition to the brake pad, she needs a new exhaust. 
does she want us to do it at the same time? And then the customer said yes or no, blah, blah, blah. But this, this was a breakage that was in commission of the work that had already been quoted for. Okay, so it's it's similar to, for example, supposing me, me saying yes, I can, I can replace a bridge for you. Let's say your bridge has come loose at one end, and I can make you a new bridge. But in order to get the new bridge on, we have to drill the old bridge off. Now, supposing in uh, in drilling off those that old bridge, which uh, and you never know what metal these things have been made of. Um, that I blunted 10 burrs. Suppose I blunted 10 diamond burrs in, in just drilling, trying to get this bridge off. And I'm only anticipating using one in the job, and I end up using 10. Do I then stop the job and go back to the patient and say, uh, you know, um, I've needed nine extra diamond burrs. You know, what what do you want to do? Do you want, to, do you want me to carry on and carry on charging you five pound, 10 pound, 15 pound every time I blunt a burr? Or would you like me to stop? You know, the, uh, we don't do this. And the answer we don't, the reason why we don't do this is because it generates, a, it would generate a phenomenal amount of bad will. And that's what it's done. That's what the Ford Garage have done. They've, they've taken, and, and bearing in mind, these, these nuts are not expensive, right? But when they finally told me what the difference was in cost, it's the difference between 15 pounds for normal nuts and uh, 35 for locking nuts. <coughs> bearing in mind that the, the locking nuts are obviously prone to failure. I mean, you know, it's all very well, our, our forward technician, and it's no work, it's no use arguing with the technicians, I tell you that, because they are, you know, they're just, they're not technicians because they're bright, okay, they're not, they're not working on cars because they're, they're intellectuals. They may have very good technical skills, but they're not, uh, you know, it's just not worth arguing with them. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to get anywhere. Anyway, he has, doesn't have the authority anyway to solve the problem. I really just, he's an expert witness, isn't he? So these locking wheel nuts, the Ford, you know, it's all very well saying we use Ford's authorised spanner and we put Ford's authorised torque on this. And then what happened is you snapped off Ford's authorised locking nut, didn't you? You know, it's Ford's system that's not working, isn't it? Um, and all he's for all he's saying about well, uh, it's you know she must have had them tightened up too much or you know the the there are three possibilities aren't there? And he's actually given me the nut. Look, when she came she came to pick the kids up, she said the technicians insisted that I show you this nut, which is why well, and it's broken. I mean, okay, but it doesn't it proves nothing. It changes nothing. All right, that could be her nut it could be another nut from another car i don't know it proves nothing all it proves is that he thinks that he's so far in the right that he wanted to wave the wheel nut around and say look i wasn't lying here it is and i don't think he was lying i think he did shear it off and then i think he stopped because he'd fucked up and the, the and there's you know there's three possible parties to blame in this aren't there there's the technician who did the car last time there's the technician who did the car this time, who I think is more in the frame, uh, you know, for having more brawns than brain. And then, and then there's the car owner who never touched the nut in the first place, did not design the nut, didn't probably didn't even know the nut existed. And yet she's the one that has to bear the cost. So let the lesson for today is, if anything goes wrong during treatment, Take it on the chin. Adapt your fees. Uh, increase your fees. Right to take account of the fact that you might uh, you might have a problem with um, with things going wrong. It's up to you to build in a contingency into your fees, just in case anything goes wrong. But don't, but do stop if they need something else doing, but you know, but don't, you know, but don't whinge about the fact that you've got a blunt drill or you've snapped a few wing nuts because this is this, the cost of this, right? The cost of this broken security thing to Ford was not, you know, that was not the 30 pounds extra that it cost to replace it. It was the fact that we are all, everyone who, who had anything to do with the job yesterday is royally fucked off. Thanks to them. Thanks to the fact that they wouldn't swallow uh, a thirty quid, a thirty quid increase in their costs.
What can I say? What can I say? All right. Okay. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.